Hallo, Hallo meine Freunde, wie geht es dir? Es geht mir gut, danke schön. Und dir? Ja, tu ich auch. Ah, 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 ich bin gut. Ich bin gut. Oh, es geht mir gut. Ja, ich bin Quincy. Ich bin Shan. Ja, welcome, welcome. Um, willkommen. Hil willkommen. Oh, Tara will be proud. Alright, guys, today we are doing. That's a French accent. Problem? We are reacting to Jamie now. Uh -uh. Geography now, Jamie. <laughs> Jamie now, Geography. So, we want to learn about Jamie, guys. So, if you're German and you're in the comment section, don't be angry because we might sound ignorant here, but correct us and any wrong, don't be angry. So let's just get right into the video. Before we go, make sure to smash the subscribe button. If there's something you want us to react to about Germany, let us know in the comment section. And yep, let's go. All right. Later, hose and schnitzel beer, bratwurst order, bread and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> God, this guy is comedy and the other Beer, complicated history, beer, no humor, EDM, and gum. No humor. Kind of like give you diarrhea, but it's like worth it. Ugh, those are such horrible stereotypes that every German is so sick and tired of hearing. I'm trying to be a. Want gummy bear? <laughs> 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 I don't know. It's time to learn geography. No! Hey everyone, I'm your host, Barbie. So we've conquered Belgium's castle, jumped through Denmark's lagoon, danced through France's forest, and now we've made it to the final boss of the EU, Kingpin oh, Germany. Okay. Level one, begin. Ah, you know why I'm smiling. Yep, Germany has a lot of territorial anomalies. We'll get into that in a little bit, but first, Germany is located in central Western Europe, bordered by nine other countries. Don't forget little Luxembourg. Was oh my god. Netherlands. Wow. So if you go to Germany, Germany wait, Germany is so huge, so massive. Yeah, that's what she said. It's bordered by Poland. Mm -mm. <laughs> Where <laughs> the Poland? Ciao. Poland is the Republic of Austria. Austria. What's okay, the... huh? Maybe that's why uh, Austria, Austria speaks, speaks German, German, and Netherlands language is also it's kind of close. Yeah, similar. Uh, I think some big The small coast on the North and Baltic seas, which they own about 50 small islands. Now, Germany, like the US, is a federal <coughs> republic which has 16 smaller states or Bundesland. Just 16 wow. states? Okay. Well, Nigeria has 36. Each with its own constitution, three of which are cities, the capital Berlin, Hamburg, and Bremen, which is actually kind of like two Where cities, Bremen? including Bremerhaven on the coast, but they kind of act like one entity. <laughs> Fun side note, Lower Saxony is actually geographically situated further north than regular Saxony. Now let's jump into the fun stuff. Now we already discussed the Jungholz Quadrapoint and the Venbahn Railway enclaves with Belgium and Austria. However, there's a few more. The entire town of Bussingen am Hochrhein is surrounded by Switzerland, whereas part of the Constance is cut off by the Rhine River and surrounded by Switzerland. However, immediately across the river, a small patch of empty land on the German side actually belongs to Switzerland. Finally, they split the island of Usedom with Poland in the north. Germany is interesting because every state in the country has its own distinct culture, dialect, history. What? What? They even have their own food, bro. Wow. But I mean, it's 16 states, so like, I think they divided each other. But still, though, like, I know, I, I know about the dialects. Yeah. Obviously, like. Yeah, it's common everywhere. Come on, yeah. Well, it's cheap food. Traditions, I mean, Bavarians will be quite drastically different from Schwestlich Holsteiners. Mecklenburg-Pommern will be different from Saarland. This all has to do with ancient and recent Wait, they were big flags? Mecklenburg-Pommern will be different from Saarland. This all has to do with ancient wow. and recent history. Basically, in the quickest way I can summarize this, Germanic tribes, Roman wars, Charlemagne, three kingdoms, this guy marries an Italian, creating a whole new mess called the Holy Roman Empire, made up of 300 smaller separate kingdoms, states, and dukedoms, which had nothing to do with Romans. Teutonic Knights, Brandenburgs became Prussia, wow. Habsburgs became Austrians, Lithuanians and I don't know, understand any, I don't understand any of this that is going on, but like the ancient histories, though. Yeah, it's like there, there are no much history going on, like in our own time, you know. It's just no, no, nothing is happening now. I swear, nothing it's is just like, social media and stuff. Yeah, wow their own thing, whereas the Hungarians joined the Austrians. Wars, wars, <coughs> battles, battles, Napoleon comes over and messes everything up, and finally, German nationalism surges, and in Who's 1871, Napoleon? Otto von Bismarck comes Napoleon over and messes before, I forgot to everything up, and finally, German before. nationalism surges, and in 1871, Otto von Bismarck creates the first proto-German unified state. And then they're all like, oh dang, we came late to this game. We gotta scramble for some colonies. And that's how all of these countries at one point spoke German. Oh, and also, keep in mind, like 300 years before this, a German banking company obtained colonial rights to Venezuela for like 20 years they were looking for the lost city of el dorado so technically you can kind of say germans colonized the americas but it wasn't like a nationalized conquest thing fast forward even more and then you get what world countries world is decolonized the uh, somewhere that is close to nigeria 
Then we'll just continue. That's literally the country side news, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm not sure which one. Americas, but it wasn't like a nationalized conquest thing. Fast forward even more, and then you get World War One. The monarchy ends, Treaty of Versailles, they lose land. Nazis come in, World War Two. Germany splits in two for about 40 years. And then finally, we get the Germany we have today. East Germany consisting of these states is today still quite different from the rest of Germany as it was first occupied and influenced by the Soviet Union. They are generally not as well off economically as the rest of the country, as you can still see the blocky Soviet style buildings oh. sprawled throughout the regions. In fact, the city of Berlin was split in half and the west side was actually an enclave of West Germany only accessible by train and highway. You can even see oh. from a satellite image the divide. East Berlin oh. still uses the yellowish tinted sulfur vapor light bulbs, whereas the West still uses fluorescent and mercury arc white wow. light bulbs. And the yeah, funny thing is, different. although Berlin is the largest city in Germany, the busiest <laughs> airports are actually Frankfurt, Munich, Dusseldorf, with Berlin Tegel ranking at number four. Otherwise, some top notable landmarks and spots would be the Brandenburg Gate, the Valhalla, oh. Cologne actually, Cathedral. Actually, Otherwise, some top notable landmarks and spots would be the Brandenburg... So I played... Uh, uh, this game, Assassin's Creed, I saw this like it was exactly like this. For gate, wow. the Valhalla, Cologne Cathedral, the Valhalla Church, the tallest like, in the world, no the Berlin are. Victory Column, and hundreds and hundreds of castles all over. The most notable one probably being Neuschwanstein, oh, the concept behind the Cinderella Castle. Germany also has over 400 zoos, more than any other country in the what? world. What? Of course, everybody knows about the. I'm sorry, why would, why would you need 400 in 16 states? Even Australia doesn't have that much zoos. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Australia would like the most. Doing just kind of animals and stuff. What? Autobahn, the highway system <coughs> in which if you see this sign, it means there's no speed limit. And it's like that for a huge wow. portion of the roadway. And no wonder, con <laughs> considering how vast and wide those cultivated countrysides can get, time for level two. Okay, think of it this way. In Germany, the more down you go, the more up you move. Basically, Germany lies on the Atlantic Shelf in the north that starts with the mudflats in the North Sea. Seriously, this island right here is accessible only for a few hours by foot until the tide comes and floods everything. Wow. Then everything just kind of creeps up into the Alps in the south by Bavaria and Baden-Württemberg, with the highest mountain, Zugspitze, located right along the border with Austria. Kind of like France, Germany is filled with a vast irrigating network of rivers like the Spray, Elbe, Vesa, Rhine, and of wow. course, the mighty Danube that starts here. About a third of the land is arable and another third is woodland and after a millennia of civilization Germans have cultivated the crap out of their country Most agriculture of course happens in the north flat plains and the central regions of the country Which is by the way kind of like Europe's tornado alley no due to its position sandwiched between the arctic blasts of Scandinavia and the moist warm jet streams of the Mediterranean below Germany can be an atmospheric war zone in the summer There are more tornadoes on average in Germany than any other country in Europe speaking of flat farmland Germany is the world's largest <laughs> rye and hop producer Germans absolutely Right, right. Absolutely love their bread. There are over bread. 300 different kinds of bread in the country. More types. 300 than types of bread. Why? Why now? World and almost every meal incorporates some kind of slice or small bun or broken of bread. <laughs> Ask gluten free? Nein. <laughs> specifically in pork they basically know every possible way to cook a pig over 50 different types of sausage exist alongside schnitzels oladen sour oh, you guys are making me hungry i want to try this so bad bro. come on you guys are making me hungry i really want to try this this way damn so that means um if they have a lot of beef then they should have a lot of wrappers it's not beef it's pork it's pork. Mm. Okay. You should have waited for them to see the Saxa, and at a big party, you might find Spanfackel. Beer reigns supreme Damn. all over as it's a rusted. button. Schwein Saxa, oh, uh, and at a big party, you might find Spanfackel. Damn. Beer reigns supreme all yeah, over. Yeah, the world. Beer. Consumers of beer after the Czech Republic, even their president has no problem with public intoxication, and Austria. Wow. Germany is world renowned for their beer, which, by the way, follows the Reinheitsgebot rule in which they are only allowed to use water, hops, malt, and sometimes yeast. Nonetheless, about 1,300 breweries exist, pumping out over 5,000 brands. The oldest continuously. 5,000 brands of, of beer, bro. Ah. <laughs> uh -uh. <laughs> Uh -huh. The world started by Benedictine monks in 1040 AD can be found here. Germany takes the environment very seriously and for the past two decades has been going on a major green revolution. As of today, they have the largest installed solar power capacity and green infrastructure practices wow. like home installed turbines. So they have like solar. turbines and solar system for... The panels have seen a huge surge in the past 10 years. Forests dominate the southern regions where the landscape gets hillier and mountainous. The most famous one being the Black Forest or the Schwarzwald in Baden-Württemberg. Deer, bears, boars. 
boar, foxes, badgers, and the national animal, the eagle, can be found thriving in these parts. Nonetheless, well, the economic Germany is known mostly for eagle. their exceptional engineering and industry production. Companies we've all heard of, like Volkswagen, BMW. Yeah, we know about Volkswagen and BMW. And Benz. I, don't, I didn't know yeah, about Benz. BMW. BMW. Engineering and industry production. Companies we've all heard of, like Volkswagen, BMW, Mercedes, Benz, Porsche, Audi, Telecom, oh, Nivea, Audi Diesel, as well. Bosch, okay. Adidas, Puma, Adidas, Puma. Yeah, it's kind of like the whole Biscoito Opolacha thing from Brazil. Remember? Well, we have mud flats, tornadoes, pork, beer, mountains, Ice all that people. Level three. Fun little side note, in Germany, this is three, not this. Now, if the EU was a family, Germany would kind of be like the dad who got out of rehab, reconciled with his wife and kids, and is taking his new life very seriously as he is haunted by the demons of his past every day. First of all, the country has about 82 million people and is the most populated in the EU, second most in Europe after Russia, and has the fourth largest nominal GDP in the world. About 80% of the country identifies as ethnically German, 12% other Europeans, mostly Polish, Italian, Dutch, and so on. Turks make up about 3.5%, Asians at 2%, oh and my the rest God, are made it's supposed to be more than, more that. than that, yeah. Wow. But More. other groups like Africans and Americans. Also, they use the Euro, they use the C and F type outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. Germany is without a doubt a global powerhouse. It is the strongest economy in the EU and makes up about 16% of no. the Union's population. It's the third largest exporter and importer of goods in the world. After the United wow. States, Germany is also the second most popular global migration destination. Wow. Germany Damn. experiences a high standard of living, tuition-free yeah. universities, if you get accepted, that is, a mostly government what subsidized high standard awesome. of living, tuition free, tuition free, like, free. But I mean, you have to study in German. Like you have to be very good in German, then you can go there. Universities, if you get accepted, that is, a mostly government subsidized <laughs> universal healthcare system, about a quarter is still privatized, and state pension for retirement at age 65. Wow. Now, when it comes to language, things get a little tricky. Each state kind of has their own type of German. However, to get by, most Germans learn how to speak Hochdeutsch, or High German, which is the standard dialect. The European Charter, however, protects the minority languages of Frisian, Danish, Romani, Sorbian, which is like a Slavic-based language used along the Czech-Polish border, and Plattdeutsch, or Low German, which has similarities to to Dutch and is typically used by the Amish and Mennonite communities across the world. In terms of regional distinctions, though, Germany is kind of divided into five cultural areas Rhineland, East and Middle Deutschland, North Deutschland, Luxembourg, and Bavaria. Rhineland is on the west side and has a culture somewhat more influenced by France, more Catholics, Carnival celebrations are huge out oh, here. East and Middle fun. Germany was the part that used to be its own country for 40 years as it was influenced by the Soviets. Sorbians can also be found here too. Northern Germany has. There was a, a country like West Germany, right? Uh, they used to play World Cup that time, West Germany. I remember. Also, sea culture that identifies closer with Denmark and the Netherlands. They are also known for being kind of quiet and reserved. Baden-Württemberg has an interesting Swabian culture where they speak a dialect so I mean, thick they, that. They, they, I know uh, they are folk dance as well. Yeah. Like 40% of it is intelligible to other Germans. Yeah. And then you have Bavaria, which is where the Americanized perpetuated stereotypes about Germany came from with Lederhosen, Dirndls, Half Timber, Beer Houses, and wow. Cuckoo Clocks. For the record, Wait. from with Lederhosen, Dirndls, Half Timber. Wow. Nice structure. Beer houses and cuckoo clocks. For the record, Germans are sick of those stereotypes. It's like saying all Americans are cowboys with guns and horses. Speaking of stereotypes, yes, yes. some of the stereotypes in Germany include things like Saxons being very indecisive, Berliners are always bragging about themselves, Swabians are stingy, Bavarians drink too much, Hessians talk too much, Holsteiners <laughs> don't talk enough, and so on. Words differ from regions too. For example, in High German, you would say Auf Wiedersehen. But in Bavarian, you would say Fiat die Gott. In Kölsch, you would say Tschüss. And in Rhineland, you might say Ayus. And there's so many compound words to get really long and complicated. Oh, this Wow, so smart. Like Pintfleischer, Ticketierungsüberwachungsaufgaben, Übertragungsgesetz. How do you know this word now? The way he's saying it so smoothly, bro. Exactly, he says it with the accent as well. Or ambiguous words that are kind of elongated to give off an extensive meaning. Germans have very vivid imaginations and make up words for everything. Like my favorite word, Backpfeifengesicht. Not this time. By the way, <laughs> words that are kind of elongated oh, to give word, back. A face in need of slapping. Backpfeifengesicht. <laughs> Not this time. By the way, for the record, this letter makes a double S sound. Yeah, yeah, However, yeah. spelling reformers have tried to decrease the usage of this letter in recent years, which has led to some protests. Germans also love dubbing everything from foreign media into German. Some like this, some don't, but either way, it's here to stay. About 60% of the country identifies at least nominally as Christians, split between Protestants and Catholics. Germany was even the birthplace of the Protestant Reformation, split from the Catholic Church by Martin Luther. Otherwise, the rest are mostly agnostic. 
ethnic or irreligious with a noticeable community of Muslims, mostly from the huge Turkish and Middle Eastern communities no. at about 5%, as well as a few Jews, Buddhists, and Hindus rounding up the remainder of 1%. To kind of get so a awesome. feel of what it's like to be German, you kind of have to understand where they've come from. After World War II, they kind of had a lot of work to do. However, it wasn't until the mid-50s and early 60s that the Wirtschaftswunde, or economic wonder, happened to which almost everybody got to work. Basically, wow. this guy envisioned and implemented a social market economy combined with free market capitalism alongside socialist policies that established fair competition in a welfare state. GDP increased by 80%, investments wow. by 120%, labor forces were utilized Sounds at the maximum. Again. Things started to get better. In Germany, all children are corralled into general public schools until age 10 when they are given the option to enroll in three different types of middle schools. Gymnasium, geared towards focusing on higher linguistic oh, wow. and science fields for universities. Realschule, a middle ground type of school. And Hauptschule, a school that is geared... Wow, that's what we call equality. Like, everything exactly. that's going to yeah. school. Exactly. And after wow. you have you can choose where you want to go. Wow. I wish... I wish... I mean, I, wish, I, I would have... I wish the world was like this, bro. Yeah, man. ...towards helping kids that seem to show promise in specific vocation or trades. Germany also has the largest music market wow. in the EU and the third music in the world market. after the US and Japan. They love preserving their heritage and culture through music and art. In fact, there are around 130 national orchestras mostly supported by public money, and artists get a 50% reduction in health insurance through no a way, bro. in the legal system. One thing that still kind of supposedly maintains itself in Germany is the mindset of der Gangenheitsbewaltigung. Totally butchered that! Which kind of translates <sighs> to a lingering sense of guilt okay. from the past. Germans have reportedly some. <laughs> okay, I don't know since I me. I butchered that. <laughs> no, 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 I think the other guy is German. Yeah, 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 yeah. So. <laughs> Supposedly maintains itself in Germany is the mindset of Der Gangenheitsbewaltigung. Totally butchered that! Which kind of translates to a lingering sense of guilt from the past. Germans oh. have reportedly some of the lowest levels of national pride. And wow. unless if you're at a soccer game, chances yeah. are you will Oh my ever god. See you should see yeah. Bayern, Bayern Munich and Dortmund. The real Dortmund fans. Yeah. Like, they go crazy. They go crazy, yeah, yeah. Like, literally. Anyone holding a German flag or waving it in any kind of like patriotic setting. It's weird, but it's kind of how things are. You monster. They've made great strides to move on from the past. Nazi flags and Mein Kampf are incredibly illegal items to own in Germany. Wow. And they even have a rule, the Volksverzung, which basically says you cannot talk trash by denying the past atrocities. Some people say this infringes on free speech. Others say it's good because it solidifies truth. Otherwise, some notable Germans throughout history include Charlemagne, although he was a Frank, but eh, I guess it kind of counts. Albrecht, Dürr, David Friedrich, Gutenberg, Bach, Beethoven, Carl Benz, Albert Einstein. Oh, All Americans would like to claim that. Wait, Albert Einstein is German. Wow. Okay, boy, move okay. to the US and became an American. <clears throat> Johannes Kepler, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe, von Friedrich Goethe. Schiller, Michael Schumacher, yes, Alex von Humboldt, and of course Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels co founded Marxism. <coughs> One thing the, Germans the past would have to be diplomacy. To this day, the German passport holds the most visa free exactly. nations out of any yeah. other country, here, just beating Sweden. Therefore, you can kind of conclude that Germany Singapore kind of well. knows how to relate to people. Let's find out how in the final round, level four. <laughs> Friendzone. Germany knows how to make friends. They have over 220 diplomatic missions abroad and over 350 honorary consuls and have an incredibly high position of authority in the EU. Their closest mm -hmm. African friend would probably be Namibia. As a oh. former German colony way back in the 19th century, Namibia held on relations and to this day, German is still a recognized language in Namibia. Germans have Wait, been what, supporting... What Africa is Namibia? Maybe it's the one that was close to us. East Africa now. Sharing ties both economically and ideologically for over a century. India and South Korea are really close friends in Asia. India supported both East and West Germany during the yeah, Cold War, and after reunification, they were like, woohoo! Even better! And Germany is to South Korea what Japan is to France. They love hmm. to piggyback off of each other's ideas and cultures, especially in the automotive industry. Many South Koreans were sent to Germany after the Korean War to work abroad and study, and Germans have been growing in fascination with visiting South Korea. The US is probably the closest ally outside of the EU. About 30% of Americans claim German heritage, and after World War II, the Marshall Plan allowed the U.S. to give post-war aid to Germany, which helped kickstart the economic recovery. Germany was a key figure in the formation of the State of Israel after World War II, which, after the Holocaust, left an obligation to invest in the building up of a Jewish community. Turkey is probably the closest Middle Eastern yeah, ally, as the Turks that. make up the largest Asian demographic in Germany, although many of them may or may not also identify as Kurds. But since Kurds don't have a state of their own, they usually go under Turkish passports when immigrating uh, and are documented British. as such. Yeah. Their best friends, however, 
however, would probably be <clears throat> literally all their neighbors. The thing is, Germany is kind of like Bosnia and Herzegovina, in which, by default, they kind of get friends based off of the regional alliances. <laughs> Bavarians get along with Austrians, Baden-Württembergs get along with Switzerland, East Germany has good relations with the Slavic countries, the Rhine states love Belgium, Luxembourg, and France, and so the north side loves like, the Netherlands and Denmark. Have... France, though, is kind of like the trophy wife of Germany, as the two have had an angry start, but then eventually fell in love and worked together beautifully. France is like the beautiful, flashy spokesperson for the EU that stands in the spotlight as Germany stands in the background, managing all the money and logistical work. In conclusion, oh, okay. although Germanic peoples have existed for thousands of years, an actual unified German state didn't appear until kind of recently, and the brief time that they've been around, they've kind of gone through some of the most intense, world-revolutionizing historical events possibly imagined. Yet, they've come out working hard and building their way up to become a world superpower. You gotta give it to them. There's something about the Germans. And with that, final boss level complete. Stay tuned. Another African state Germany has ties to, Ghana, is coming up next. Just gonna, we're probably gonna. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. That's 50 minutes of history, and we did not get tired. This guy, he knows his job. All right, guys, that's Germany now. Geography, <laughs> geography now. Germany. Oh, buddy. And if you guys love this one, you know what to do. Smash the subscribe button. Tell us what, what things you love us to react to about Germany. If you're German, you're here. And yeah, we'll see you next time, guys. Peace.